What's up everyone, John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here. Now that the iPad 2 has been out for just about a month, I thought it'd be a great time to step back. We've had some weeks elapse since the initial review period and see if what I thought then is true now and decide if the iPad 2 has a place in your home as your tablet of choice. Let's go ahead and get started. So as I mentioned in my initial review, the iPad 2 fixes everything that I really never thought was wrong with the iPad 1. It is 33% thinner. I never thought the iPad 1 was relatively fat. Uh, it is noticeably faster. I never thought the iPad 1 was slow. The A5 processor, which offers dual core processing speed, in addition to the extra RAM, we're now up to 512 megabytes, definitely makes for an improved experience. And where you notice that isn't really an app launch speed if I go ahead and launch CNN. It'll launch relatively same from what it did with the iPad 1. And if you want some more comparisons of the iPad 2 versus iPad 1, link's going to be down below if you want to check that out. Uh, but what this does do, where you notice a big difference in speed, uh, is actually in the web browser. So I go ahead and open up Safari here. Let's go ahead and want to launch Techno Buffalo, for example. Uh, it launches much faster than I saw on the previous generation iPad. And again, when you watch the comparison video, uh, you'll notice that speed difference. Uh, really where you notice it isn't going to be when you have a fast Wi-Fi connection. Where I've noticed the speed difference is actually on the 3G side. AT&T's 3G networks, again, another video done on this, uh, are noticeably faster, at least uh, hypothetically, from the Verizon CDMA network. However, due to the increased horsepower of the iPad 2, Verizon's 3G CDMA network tends to load faster for me than AT&T's on the iPad 1. Bit of a convoluted way to say the extra horsepower really translates increased speed. Nothing really do with the networks themselves, just they're able to process information that's coming in much quicker. Uh, I didn't have an issue with the iPad 1 as far as scrolling goes and getting those little boxes that show up when you scroll, uh, but this does sort of fix any problem that might have been there. Pinch to zoom really does work nicely. The addition of the cameras is kind of blah. I believe Chris Perlow uh, was the one that said, you can literally have minutes of fun with the camera applications. Uh, and that is quite true. Here is Photo Booth, for example. I have honestly never used Photo Booth outside of my initial demonstrations that I did for you guys. You can see all the cool little motions here. I have used FaceTime once and I've taken probably three pictures with the iPad 2. Now that might be just unique to me. The FaceTime feature if you live abroad or you travel a lot might be a killer, killer, killer must have feature for you. At least for me it hasn't really translated to much use. The cameras were really much ballyhooed. You gotta have cameras, you gotta have cameras, you gotta have cameras even by me as well. And I'm finding myself now that I've got the cameras, I can see that in the front and back. I'm not really using them. Something to uh, keep in mind. Uh, the next big addition with the iPad 2 was the smart covers, uh, which have been sort of lamented as being grossly expensive. Uh, and they definitely are grossly expensive. You can see it sort of fall right in there. I've got the red leather one here. Uh, they do offer a decent amount of protection for the screen. However, go ahead and kick this display off. They do leave a bit of a mark. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but where these ridges hit the screen, you do get a bit of a smudge, something to keep in mind. They offer a bit of functionality. I like how when you type, if you go ahead and do your little triangle motion there, you get that raised surface. I found that to be very useful and a very welcome addition when I'm typing. Do I think it is worth the money? No, I most definitely do not. Uh, if you want to have a smart cover just because the magnetic business is kind of cool, uh, and it is very cool, then go ahead and do so. I know it's going to protect the front of the device, um, but you are not going to get any sort of protection for the back. Uh, so my advice is to get a full case for the iPad 2 and have something that's going to offer that increased functionality of the raised surface as well. Most cases now have some sort of little bit of mechanism in the back that'll raise it up for when you're typing or will prop it up for when you want to watch movies. Um, I do think that this is a worthy upgrade to the iPad 1. Uh, the increase in speed alone, which is something again that I never thought I needed, uh, has been very, very welcome to me. Uh, especially while traveling abroad, using the internet traveling abroad, but traveling out of my home when I need to use the 3G radio um, has really been welcome. Uh, it's much faster than I saw with the iPad 1. Do I think that you should get an iPad 2 if you already have an iPad 1? The answer is an astounding no. There's really 
very little reason to upgrade, at least from my standpoint, from the current generation iPad. If you don't have an iPad and you're saying, well, should I get the iPad 2? Or should I even wait a year for the iPad 3? Go ahead and get the iPad 2. It's going to work very well. You might be not have some of those features. You might see in the next generation. But you'll always find yourself playing the waiting game. iPad 2 just came out. If you need a tablet, this is probably the best one uh, available right now. If you're saying, well, I can get a cheap iPad 1 now and not get the iPad 2, that is also a very decent way to go. However, if you don't have a device right now, you may want to pay the premium to upgrade to the iPad 2 versus the discounted prices of the iPad 1, the increased speed, which is not something that I really thought was going to be that important when I did my review, uh, but the more I use the device, the more I appreciate um, that increase in speed. Also new in the iPad 2 is colors. I've got a white version right here, and I wish that I got black. This is going to be a personal preference thing, whether or not you like the white or the black. I think the white on the iPhone 4 looks absolutely fantastic. I think it looks classy, uh, and I think it looks unique. On the iPad 2, I think the white looks a little bit cheap, and to be quite honest, I'm really worried that my red smart cover is going to rub off, and this is going to turn pink or have some sort of discoloration. I haven't had that problem yet, but it's definitely something that I am concerned about. Uh, really, in conclusion, the problems that I've had with the iPad are the things I've lamented on many, many, many occasions, uh, and that is iOS itself. Uh, it has not changed really much at all since its launch and debut in 2007. I think the notification system is extremely obtrusive. I think the way that it handles multitasking is quite archaic. It's really just an app switching system here. And I think that the lock screen is such a joke. When you lock the iPad, you really have no information that's displayed when you try and unlock it other than the time and date. If you've got a password, you can go ahead and put that in. You can access some pictures, but you don't know if you have any emails in there. Uh, and seeing things like uh, Motorola's Honeycomb that offers new lock screen functionality, uh, HTC's Flyer coming out that has improved lock screen functionality, lets you actually open applications from your lock screen, uh, really shows where iOS is efficient, something that I love to see improved. Uh, anyway, guys, what do you think about the iPad 2? Did you pick one up? How have your opinions changed or not changed uh, since, since you picked it up and since the release? I just want to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, leave your comments down below. All the videos mentioned are going to be down and the what have you. Be sure to check them out. I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.